Oh, I'm excited about this one today. I have a good feeling. I want to talk to you guys about a fish pond, why we cannot just maximize a whole bunch of stuff. I've got some tricks and stuff to just, I mean, stack functions like nobody's business today and turn that boring old fish pond into something that's great that I'll actually feed you, make you money, give great ambiance, give habitat for animals, insects. Let's get right into it. So the very first thing is uh, seedling production, or pro seedling propagation. What you do is you get yourself a little pump on a timer and you pump some water out of this, uh, your fish pond, depending how big your fish pond is. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna send this over into a tray of any size. Well, you gotta, you have to match the tray to the gallons of your pond, right? You don't wanna suck out too much water. So what's happening is the, is the pump's gonna suck out this water. It's gonna fill up this tray, which has a little tiny pipe fitting, which you can make to where it drains. Maybe it keeps about maybe a half an inch of water in this tray. The rest of it dumps out through the top of the opening of the pipe. Kind of hard to explain. My whiteboard might be better, but what happens is it fills up this little tray. Let's, I've got about a three by two foot. And which, what I do is I grab these little net pouches, these little biodegradable pouches, fill them up with, the, with soil, uh, certain types of soil. I don't have time to get into today, but you can look at it uh, on your own. Uh, well, let's just say it, peat moss and uh, uh, coconut core or um, vermiculite as a mixture. Either one of those, vermiculite with coconut core, vermiculite with uh, uh, peat moss. Fill that up, and the reason why you don't want to put regular soil, stuff can drain in and hurt your fish. So this is just like a, a sterile soil there. Drop a seed in there, put a little bit of vermiculite on top, leave it alone, it'll propagate itself. What happens is this is automated to keep moisture, to sprout the seeds, and also to give them um, food to actually eat fertilizer. And you can grow huge plants out of this tray, and you're separating them from the fish. Um, <clears throat> food production. I found I was growing dino kale. Now, my experimentation is very limited. I didn't go too far, but I've never seen anybody do this before. I was actually growing peppermint and spearmint and dino kale. I tried lettuce. It didn't really work out. What happened is I put a little net cup inside the, uh, the inner rim of the pond, filled it up with uh, crushed gravel, dropped some seeds in there, and dino kale would grow from the top. I actually found my dog eating the dino kale for some reason a few times. So it actually fed the, my dog. But I would take the clippings from the top as well and get a little snack. And what was happening is the fish were eating the roots from the bottom. So essentially what we were doing is we were creating uh, herbs and food. The fish were eating the roots. We were eating the top. And it was a win-win situation for everybody, even the dog. Um, fish for meat is my next one. You guys can go down and get yourself some bluegill. Get yourself a little tiny uh, treble hook on the end of a fishing line and go to any local lake or something. You know, you, there's Oscars, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, edible fish. And what you're going to get the tiniest little treble hook that you can find. Just put a little bit of lunch meat on that thing. Dip it like within like three inches of water towards the edge of the pond. And you can just pull these little like bluegills and stuff right out, little baby ones. Put them in a bucket of water, take them home put them in your pond and now you have free fish and you can actually raise them for meat. You can do tilapia and stuff like that. That gets a little bit more complicated. You know, with a tilapia, you have to have certain water temperatures and stuff like that, but go local where you're at and get the species that are prone to your biome, to your area. And it's all free guys. And then on top of that, um, what we can do is we can grow duckweed, which actually a lot of fish will, will eat. Um, and the duckweed could be used in the garden, right? And this is a problem though with duckweed. It's going to take over everything, right? It's just going to, at a certain times of years, it'll just bloom over the whole top, which is kind of nice because it keeps the sunlight from coming in, causing an algae bloom, uh, which is something I don't have in my notes here, which is really, really annoying. I mean, it's when that green moss just takes over everything, right? But the problem we'll have is that a, I want to talk about an airlift pump versus a traditional pump. A traditional pump has a little uh, propeller or impeller, I think they call it. And what it is, is it's like a fan, right? It spins around in a circle and it causes suction from the out, outside to the inside of the pump, which forces uh, uh, centrifugally, I guess you could say, up a, a tube into wherever it needs to go. Once that duckweed starts getting in there and once moss and stuff, it starts to ruin the propeller, just like on a boat. So what we have is the airlift pump. When I f I'll make this simple. I, I could probably do a whole show on airlift pumps, which I probably should. But my first experimentation with the airlift pump is basically a PVC pipe, a half inch PVC pipe. And I cut it about two feet long 
I drilled a little hole way at the bottom, inserted one of those little, it looks like a surgical tube, right? The one that comes for the air, your, your little air um, pump that goes for an aquarium. Stuck that into that, that pipe and just plugged in the little tiny, you know, the little tiny ones you use for an aquarium. This shoots bubbles inside the pipe. The pipe is submerged halfway in the water. You can play with it up and down to see when the water starts to bubble up. But what happens as the bubbles rise, they cause suction. And what happens, the water starts to spit out like a geyser out of the top. Now, the further you put this thing down, you've got to play around with it. I don't have time to go in full details, but what are we doing here? We're not, it'll suck up little pieces of, of a rot, like uh, rags, weeds, duckweed, anything that goes to the bottom, it'll suck up. There's no moving imp impeller. There's nothing to impede it, really, uh, unless a big rock or something just stuck to the bottom. But that's, you know, if you've got it suspended, that's not really an issue. We're also stacking functions here because... It's way less energy than a, a regular house pump, but it also eliminates the second thing you need to do is aerate your pond. Now what you're doing is you're aerating and you're moving the water around. Very airlift pumps are just awesome. I have so many things here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get to them in 10 minutes for you guys here. Uh, utilizing a, a uh, swirl filter. So a swirl filter is basically a five-gallon uh, water jug, right? Those plastic ones you guys see that comes down with a spout on the bottom. So what I did was cut a hole on the top, drill two holes on opposite sides. While that water is being pumped up, whether it's an airlift or traditional pump, it's going to come into an intake with a, uh, with a little pipe, a little elbow that's going to kink the water over to the left, let's say, uh, clockwise, right? And it's going to shoot that water in from, from, from one side. It's going to swirl around and around. And just below that, maybe about two inches below where the intake is, we have another spout that goes out and dumps into the pond. Why is this significant? Because what happens is the water from the pond, all the muck and the, and the debris and stuff, especially when your pond's cloudy and you want it nice and pretty, what will happen is it'll go circulate around this, this in the swirl filter and all the heavy sediment will set to the bottom and all the clean water will come out the other end. Uh, what you can do is fasten yourself a little valve or just have a little cap on the bottom, right, that comes with it. Get yourself a little bucket, undo that cap, drain out all the mud, cap it off before it gets to the clean water, and now you have this beautiful compost that you can use fish waste in your garden. Um, it also worked as an emergency water source. They shut off the water and uh, power, uh, 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 something happened, they hit the utility lines, and I think it was one time where the water and the power had to get, be shut off, and uh, luckily, when I was living in my tiny house, I had about 100 gallons of, uh, of auxiliary water. But I was just sitting there. It was a hot day. I was sitting by my pond and um, noticed that, wow, this water with the plants in it and with the circulation of oxygen and everything in there, you can literally drink. Aquaponics water, guys, you can drink that. It doesn't look like it, right? It's all tan. That's just the, the normal bacteria, that the beneficial bacteria that come from the, air, the atmosphere. You'll notice it looks a little like mud almost. And that's, it's not just fish waste. It's actually very clean. So the plants suck all the, the, the ammonia from the fish waste and stuff like that and convert it back to oxygen. It's a symbiotic relationship. And they also use it to grow. So yeah, it can be used as emergency water uh, source. My dog would drink water. I'd put a bowl of, of regular old tap water or even filtered water. And for some reason, the movement of the water, uh, my dog just liked. So I didn't even have to uh, give my dog water anymore. Actually, the pet cat, the neighborhood cat we had coming around, I built a little shelf for him to stand on the edge. He would come in and drink the water as well. Um, not to say the birds and stuff too, wildlife, which we'll get into. Um, so insect habitat. If you've got a garden... And what's happening is I was growing such things as a uh, horsetail and stuff like that. Uh, and it gives them, it's like bamboo, right? Inside the pond, what happened is dragonflies would come and they'd eat the larvae that were inside the pond. Uh, it, it, it created a habitat, like I said, for birds, for frogs. We had frogs and amphibians and stuff climbing in and li actually living in there. We saved a turtle, put him in there one time, and that was pretty cool. But yeah, it creates the insect, and then the bees and wasps and stuff come to drink water when it's hot, right? What's going to happen, those bees are going to come pollinate your, your plants. And then you're going to have the dragonflies, which are going to eat a lot of the, the bad insects, like aphids and stuff like that. Um, the aesthetics and ambience is what really gets me. Just that running water to see fresh, bright, vibrant kale and mints and stuff growing in there. My daughter would go and take a pair of scissors and just cut some mint for herself to, to make tea and stuff like that. And just having, seeing the fish and everything, the sound of the running water is very relaxing. 
Um, and I think that's why most people get it. But we're going on big scale here. We're, we're making this thing produce for us, not just ambience and, you know, look good, right? Let's actually do something. As I always like to say, uh, forget about the aesthetics. Let's go for the performance, right? What, what this thing can produce for you. Um, another little trick I got for you guys here is a bug light fish food producer. So you get yourself a little bug light and you suspend it just over your pond at nighttime. And what's going to happen? Mosquitoes. And unfortunately, I don't like to kill moths, but they, they, they'll come in. But all these moths and, and mosquitoes and bugs that are attracted to the light will hit the light, get zapped. And where will they fall? Right down into the pond where the fish will have food. And you did this large enough scale, you can, it's total fish food production. So you could sell aquatic plants, guys. Um, like I said, duckweed, just take a, a little finger of duckweed. If you can find it in a pond somewhere and dip that into your, into your, uh, your, your pond, right? Get it from a wild source, um, just, or your neighbor's house, put one in there and wham, it'll just propagate itself. There's water hyacinths and stuff that you can use for greens, for compost, for fodder, for animals, right? If you had yourself a couple of quail or something, you can fit, feed them the duckweed and stuff like that. Um, you could also sell these plants if you can get, uh, 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 what is those lilies of the Nile and stuff like that? Um, the, I said the, um, uh, what is that, that plant that I was just talking about that looks like bamboo. Well, anyways, horsetail, there you go. And horsetail can actually be used for a kidney tonic, uh, a kidney cleanse. You can actually use it as a tea and you use it to spray on your garden as a, as a fight against powdery mildew. So you got aquatic animals. You can throw crawdads in there. You can raise, as I said, tilapia and fish, which you could do is my advice would be is to put a giant uh, a net that fills up the whole entire pond, right? And what's going to happen, let's say if you had tilapia, a lot of people don't know that the, the, the babies will live in the mother's mouth for a long time. She'll protect them because the males will come and eat them. And uh, what you'll do is once the mating season's done and you got the little babies, you can pick up this net and that'll pick up all your large fish and all the little baby fry will be down at the bottom, right? And another trick that you can do is you can put a finer mesh net, a second one at the bottom of that. So when you get your large fish, scoop them up, put them in a bucket, take that net out, take the fine net one out, and now you can get all your fry, all your little baby fish, and you can sell those. You can use them for uh, for fish food. You could, There's many, many uh, um, applications. And then let's just look at this whole system I talked about just now as a whole. Sell it as a whole. You can make this thing very pretty where it's producing um, uh, food, right? Where it's producing seedlings, where it's, it's just got this, um, not just an ambiance, not as aesthetics, it's got functionality. And I'm sure a lot of people would really think that's something cool and something to talk about, right? I mean, you invite your friends over and they're sitting there looking at this whole system and go, what the heck are you doing with this pond? And I mean, it could look, I said, very pretty if you, if you really worked on it, not a crappy experimentation like I've been doing. You know, guys, I'm always adding, when I see stuff, I can't stop. My brain just goes overactive and I'm always looking at better ways and things that I can innovate. But guys, I hope I turned you guys on to something cool where, I mean, let's just look at things, not in their simple form. What can we stack functions as we learn in permaculture? What else could we do with this one thing that make it multi-dimensional, multi-purpose, right? Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I This one really got me excited, but uh, I've got to get back to work and I'll see you guys on the next one.